I hope everybody's doing well. Um, just give a few minutes for everybody to join in. Hope everybody's having a good week. Today we're going to be talking about Social Security and specifically a provision that reduces, it's possible it might reduce your Social Security. So if you if you have a government pension or um, a uh, state pension, local pension, if you work in the courts uh, for as a teacher, educator, um, pretty much any anything where you're earning a pension, uh, police, correction, uh, uh, Department of Corrections, things like that. So we'll uh, we'll jump in here here in a second. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. Welcome everyone, if you're just now getting in. Um, just again, we're gonna be talking about something today that is a surprise to most people. Um, in most cases, an unfortunate surprise. Uh, we're gonna be talking about what's called the Government Pension Offset, or GPO for short. So what that is, 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 is there is a few ways out there um, WEP, GPO, you may have, have heard those if you're watching, if you're watching this video or if you're joining us today. Um, there are laws out there that basically say that if you worked at a job where you earned a government pension, um, that job and that pension itself, once you start to receive it, actually reduces uh, social security amounts that you're eligible for. So there's two provisions, again, D WEP, windfall elimination provision, and GPO, government pension offset. So uh, today we're going to be talking specifically just about the GPO. So we're going to have another webinar that we're going to do maybe uh, next month or so in a few weeks. We're going to be talking about the windfall elimination provision, um, but this time we're just talking about uh, GPO. So if you're a teacher, again, or you worked at a police department, DPS, there's a lot of, of things in Texas. Most of, our, most of you guys are in Texas that are watching. Um, or maybe you know somebody, right? Maybe you have a, a child or even a mother or father, uh, someone that was an educator or worked in a, in a state government uh, type role. Um, then this is something that really affects them and uh, definitely don't want them to be surprised by it. So let's jump right in. I'm going to share my screen and I just have an example that we're going to walk through. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know usually on here Bob and I are confirming uh, what's on the screen for one another, but uh, we'll just roll with this today. Hopefully y'all are seeing the... Uh, the definition on there. So what is government pension offset? Again, the government pension offset or GPO, um, it's a provision uh, of, that pertains to social security benefits and it reduces the amount of social security that you're eligible for if you have a pension. And the, and the requirement really is in the job where you earn that pension, did you pay into social security? So if you were paying into social security, and paying into the pension system. Um, that's very rare, uh, but if you were paying into both, then, then this, this rule's not gonna affect you the same way. But public school teachers, um, people, uh, fire departments, people that work uh, for the railroad, um, all of these, I got some examples here. If you look, um, DMV employees, TRS, that's the teacher retirement system, ERS, uh, Employee Retirement System of Texas, uh, Texas Municipal Retirement System, if you work for a municipal court. Um, and then the list goes on and on, Texas Department of Corrections, uh, and, and, and uh, there's actually even pretty much the state court system. So, um, well, let's, let's jump in and talk about an example here. So just moving on down a bit, can see real briefly WEP versus GPO. We'll talk about WEP later. But if you are somebody and you have spent your career earning a state pension, let's just, we'll go with the example of a teacher to make it easy. If you worked in your career, you know somebody that worked uh, the majority of their life teaching, maybe 25, 30, 35 years, um, when they were working at that job, 
uh, they pay into, in the case of a teacher, they pay into TRS, the teacher retirement system. So 7% of the income that you earn in that case gets taken out of your paycheck right away. It goes into the teacher retirement system and it, it's building a pension for you. So in that case, teachers, they don't pay into social security. So there's no, there's no money that comes out of their paycheck to go in to, to, to pay for social security benefits. Um, and so a lot of teachers, maybe they, they worked in college or they worked in the, in the private sector before they were a teacher. Maybe they have a small social security benefit that they, that they built. Uh, maybe it's a few hundred dollars, maybe $500 or so. Um, so they can, you can definitely have your own benefit, even if you're, even if you're a teacher, but it's probably going to be pretty small. Um, and so in that case you worked and, uh, you earn that pension. Now, if you're married, that's where this GPO is going to affect the most people. Uh, GPO does not affect the own, your own social security that you would receive based on your own benefit. Um, it's going to affect your benefits as a spouse and your benefits as a widow or a widower. So everyone out there, if you're married, whether you work or not, if your spouse is receiving Social Security, normally you are entitled to half of the Social Security that they receive. Um, and so what this provision does is it takes away your ability to collect that half of Social Security that you would normally be entitled to. Um, so let's let's go through here. I've got some numbers. You can see some color coding on the screen here, trying to make it a little easy with the amounts and how they move down through this process. But uh, we'll we'll just take a look here. We'll assume, let's just say that that uh, uh, Sue has a uh, state pension. Maybe she was a teacher, and it's for eighteen hundred dollars. Now, Sue also, before she was a teacher, she earned her own Social Security benefit that was $450 a month. That's what it comes to. That's what's on her own personal Social Security statement that she gets. Um, and, but, but Sue's married and her spouse, Tom, has a Social Security benefit he receives that's $3,600. So in a normal situation, Tom's spouse would receive half of his Social Security. So normally um, they would they would receive eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, but because Sue has the eighteen hundred dollar pension, it's going to re reduce that amount. And so actually, yeah, let's see spousal benefit. There's a typo on here. OK, so let's just say that Tom's benefits thirty four hundred dollars since that's that's where it goes down here. So Tom's benefits $3,400, Sue would normally be able to collect $1,700. So the GPO reduction says that for every $3 in pension Sue receives, it reduces her, her spousal social security, that $1,700 amount, it's gonna reduce that by $2 for every $3 of her pension. So her $1,800 pension, two thirds of that is $1,200. So the GPO provision, what it does is it takes that $1,700 amount she'll normally get, and it just takes away $1,200 from it, just, just cuts it, it just goes away. So after this reduction of the GPO, Sue's at, can actually only receive $500 in Social Security. Now, she had a $450 benefit she could receive on her own, and this, and this provision doesn't affect that $450, but you can see that even after the reduction, that $500 she can get is still more than the benefit, that $450 she'd normally get on her own benefit. So this is a very common occurrence here to where, um, in this case, uh, Sue's looking at this, she's saying, okay, I'm getting, we're getting $3,400 for Tom's Social Security, we're getting $1,800 for my pension, and then after this reduction is coming, we're basically just left with $500 uh, for my spousal benefit where, you know, again, I would normally get that 1700. Uh, so total income for Sue is going to be her $1,800 pension plus the $500 in social security spousal benefit that she's getting after the GPO. So $2,300. Um, so that $2,300 would be added to Tom's $3,400 social security he's receiving based on his own benefit. And so you're looking at, a uh, you're looking at $5,700 between the two of them. And so that's important because when we're, 
looking at projections and we're looking at, at retirement income planning, uh, this is the two major pieces are right income and expenses money in and money out um, you know normally people have to to take a little bit from their investments to supplement their monthly income but that's really going to be determined by you know the cash flow from the income and expenses that you just have coming on outside of the investments so this is a big thing because without this provision tom and sue wouldn't be getting fifty seven hundred dollars they would be getting uh, $6,900. And so that's a, that's a huge change in the monthly income uh, that they would receive. So this is, this is something that when we talk to people quite often, they have never about this, they've never heard of it. Um, sometimes we'll start to work with people uh, right before they retire. They just wanna make sure everything's in good order. And sometimes they've added up the different income amounts that they expect are gonna come in. And, uh, and then they learn about this and it's, it's kind of a shocker. So um, sometimes people are retiring and maybe they're, they're close to 70, maybe they're already receiving social security. And uh, you know, in this case, may, maybe, maybe Sue hadn't, hadn't started, she was still working, so she hadn't started collecting her pension, but she had already started receiving social security. So the, the, you can actually receive the higher social security until you retire and start collecting that pension. So um, sometimes that's been the case where people are already getting their social security amount and they think, oh, I'm gonna get this pension, it's just gonna add on top of that. Well, not exactly. So um, if you know somebody that is going to receive, a, it can be a federal, state, local government pension, uh, municipality, um, if there's pretty much any pension that was received from a job or wasn't Social Security, this is a big deal. So if you know somebody, please send them our way. It's not, uh, I will say, uh, in, in the time that Bob and I have been doing this, very rarely do we interact with other uh, financial planners that are really aware, aware of how this works. It's kind of a, a niche thing. So, um, you know, we'd love to talk to, to anybody that we might be able to help that you know. Um, or, or maybe if you're watching this video, because uh, this is something that's gonna, gonna affect you later on. I'm sure you'll have some more questions and we can dive down into the, the specifics of your situation, but uh, just let us know, reach out to us, email or phone. Um, so that's pretty much all I had today, uh, for today. Next week, Bob and I are going to be talking about the, uh, what he calls the election protection strategy. So. Um, we have a new strategy that is, has come out. It's a, it's a hedging strategy, um, protections that we can put in place to protect a portfolio from uh, it's different events. So it's, it's definitely, there's, there's of course, in any type of protection, at some level, there's a cost to doing that, right? So just like insurance, right, on your car or your, your, uh, your house, um, you wanna protect something, it usually costs a little bit to do that. So we'll be diving down into what's called our mission head strategy next Tuesday. We'll both be on that call. So um, definitely something that is uh, timely given the election. There's some people are unsettled about that and what, what could happen. Um, so we'll be talking about that next Tuesday at noon. We'd love to see you guys on there. Uh, otherwise, hope you have a great week and uh, y'all take care.